Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a iOS stylized toggle button in Pixate. It's going to be functional and it's pretty easy to make and I'm going to show you how to make it so that you can move it around anywhere without any of the animations getting messed up so that you can even duplicate them and place multiples on the screen. So let's get started. Now you can see when it's tapped, the white background sort of shrinks out. When it's turned on, it, it shoots back up and, and takes a full size. So I've already got a background placed on here and just a layer. Since the button itself is mostly white in the off position, we aren't going to be able to see it unless we have this background. So to go ahead and just place a layer, make it cover the whole canvas, make it a dark color. And then I've already imported the layers from the package. If you haven't downloaded the packet with these layers, you can um, find it in the description. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. And this is going to be the shell container for the button itself. We're going to resize it to 52 by 32. We're going to place it right here in the middle of the canvas just to make it easier at 134 and 268. Then we're going to place our assets in. We're going to place the handle in two times and we'll rename, we'll name one handle on and handle off. The reason for this is that since to make it functional we need to make two copies one is going to serve one purpose and then it's going to disappear once pressed and th reveal the one below it which will serve another function and when that is pressed it will disappear and the other one will reappear on top of it so it's going to look like it's just one one sliding button but it's actually going to be two separate assets <clears throat> so we'll place we're going to place it inside this container but first let's make this container transparent and then we'll place it right inside we'll place these right on top of each other I put um, the off on top of on because uh, just so the button starts in the off position we'll place these inside the container we'll go through and make sure these are placed at zero zero within the container Okay. then we will place our backgrounds Bring on the white, bring on gray, green, and place them inside of the container as well. We're going to order them so that gray is in the back. Then we'll put green in the middle and white on top. We'll go sure through and make sure these are all placed at zero, zero within their container. Okay, so now you can see we have a button, so now we're going to add some functionality to it. First thing we're going to do is add a tap interaction to both of our handles. And then in handle off, we're going to add two move animations. First one is going to be move right, and then we'll name the second one move left. And move right is going to be based off of its own tap. So handle off tap. And to match iOS, we're going to set the easing curve to spring. The friction will be at 20 and the tension will be at 200. For move left, we're going to make that based off of handle on's tap with the same animation style spring easing curve 20 at 200. Then we're going to add a fade animation, actually two fade animations to these so that when we tap it, it will move and it will fade out instantly revealing toggle on. So I'll make this one fade out, make the other one fade in, Fade out is going to be based off of 
handle off tap. We'll make it fade to zero and we'll just go and make this an instant duration. Fade in will be based off of handle on's tap. Make this fade to 100 and it will also be instant duration. So now we need to do the same thing for handle on. So I'm going to come in here, add two move animations, two fade animations. We'll name this move right, move left, then fade in, and fade out. So move right is going to be based off of handle on's tap. Same using curve as before, spring, 20 and 200. Move left is going to be based off of handle on's tap. Spring easing curve, 20 and 200. We'll make fade in based off of handle off tap. Set it to 100, make it instant. Fade out will be on handle on's tap, zero and instant. So once we get that set, we're going to come back into our move animations. I realized that I forgot to say where they're going to move, which is important. So for any move right animation, we'll say that its left side is going to move 20 pixels in. And for move left, its left side is going to go back to 1. So we'll do this for both handle on and off, right to 20, left to 1. So once it sets, when we tap it, see it bounces over. I can hit it both ways. It goes on and off. So we're going to come back and add some more animations to these in a little bit, just to make it really match the iOS style. But before we do that, we're going to set our backgrounds to work the way we need to. So we've got a gray background, our green background, and our white background. The gray works sort of as, as a placeholder. Nothing really happens with it. It just it just is stagnant. The green fades in when you turn the button on and fades out when you turn the button off. And the white background sort of maintains its shape but scales down when the button is turned on and scales up to fill this background when it's turned off. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a couple scale animations to it. We'll call this first one scale down and the second one will be scale up. Scale down is going to be based off of handle off tap. It's going to scale to a factor of 0.1 times, so we're not going to have it go completely down, but it's going to be um, enough hidden. And we're going to use an ease out quadratic curve with a duration of 0 0.3 seconds and a delay of 0 0.05. Excuse me, we'll make that um, 0 0.25 duration with a delay of 0 0.05. And then we'll go to scale up which will be based off of handle on, tap. And since we're going to have it down um, much smaller when it needs to be scaled up, we're going to come in and say that we want it to scale back up to one times its size. And we'll use an ease out quadratic curve. We'll use a 0 0.3 second duration and we'll also delay this 0 0.5. So when we go off, it shrinks down. We turn it on, it goes up. Now we need to make our green background show up. So right now it's uh, at 0% opacity. So we're going to call this fade in, add a fade in animation. And we'll say that when it, the handle on, I'm sorry, handle off is tapped, it'll fade up to 100% with the normal duration 
and then we'll add one more so that we can make it fade out. This will be based off of handle ons, tap, and make it fade to zero. Now I'm noticing that our handles are actually placed a little bit wrong. What we want to do is not put them at zero, zero, but we'll move them in one and down one for both handle on and off. So their placement should be at one and one. So now that we've got our background working, when we tap it on, it fades in and the white shrinks. We tap it off, the white expands, the gray, the green fades out, revealing the gray background behind it. So you got that nice little, little band. Now one more thing with these handles. It's difficult to tell and you can't see it, but the devil's in the details. When the button, when the toggle button is hit, the handle actually stretches out a little bit. And when it bounces, which is what we set, we set that spring bounce. When it bounces in, it takes its shape back again. To do that, we are going to use little trickery. We're going to add four scaling effects to each handle. So we'll call the first one stretch out off. We'll call the next one stretch in off and vice versa for these other ones. So this will be stretch out on, stretch out off. So keep in mind, since we have two of these, we need to do this for both, and we want them both to be moving, um, regardless of which, which handle is actually moving. So for stretch out off, this is gonna be based off of handle off's tap. We're going to say that we want it to scale to a specific size. We're going to unlink X and Y, and we're going to scale the width of this out from what it is at 31 to 35. Then we're going to add a duration of 0.1 seconds. It's really quick. And we can come and do that again with stretch out on, which is based off of handle on's tap. We'll use the same same measurements. So scale to specific size up to 35, 0 0.1 second duration. And we can minimize these two since we don't need them and we'll just do um, the stretch ins now. So stretch in off is based off of handle offs tap. And we're going to tell it to scale to a specific size and we're going to say go back to the size that it is at 31 by 33. Now the duration for these is going to be the same but we're going to give a small delay of 0 0.2 seconds. And we'll do the same thing for stretch in on which I have named incorrectly. It can be a little difficult to keep track of these things so don't, don't worry if it's hard to get a handle on it. Um, we're going to rename this stretch in on. It's going to be based off of handle on's tap. Scale to a specific size. Unlink X and Y. It'll be 31 by 33. 0.2 second duration. 0.1 second duration. With a 0.2 second delay. So we'll have to do this for the, the, the other handle, but you can see when we tap it, it barely it stretches out just a little bit. So now we can come over to handle on. Add our four scale animations. We'll name this first one stretch out on. Oops. Second one is stretch in on. Third stretch 
out off, then stretch in off. So stretch out on is going to be based off of handle on, tap, specific size, unlink, we'll set it to 35 pixels, 0 0.1 second duration. We'll go down here to stretch out off, do the same thing, but based off of handle off's tap, unlink, 35, 0.1 second duration. We can minimize these. Now for the in, for stretch in on, it's based off of handle on's tap. Pause. Specific size, unlink X and Y. Reset it to 31 by 33. 0.1 second duration with a 0.2 second delay. Same thing for off, based off handle offs, 31 by 33, 0.1 duration, 0 0.2 second delay. So now we have a properly animated button. What's nice about the scale or the stretch is that it kind of blocks that white background. You could see it earlier how um, a little bit was left behind behind this, this button, but this stretch completely hides that shrinking. So there's one more thing that we need to do before we're completely done. Currently the white background size is the same as the gray, but we want to shrink that down just a little bit so that we can show the gray behind it, um, just sort of like a, a bezel on there. So that's, that's easy to do, it's not gonna ruin any of our scaling. What we're going to do is come in here and shrink it down by four pixels each way so that we can have a two pixel uh, bezel. So we're going to come and make this 47 width by 29, or I'm sorry, 27. And since it's still at zero, zero, and then we're going to move it in two pixels and down two pixels so that we can get that two pixel bezel. So now you can see there's a nice little, little bezel around this. It goes away when you turn the button on. When you turn it off, it comes back. Now it's really simple to make this button functional. It's just going to be based off of interactions with the handles. So to keep this clean, we're gonna rename this containers button. And then we're going to add another layer. Now you can make this button do pretty much whatever you want um, as, you know, as far as the animations and interactions go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this square change colors. So I'm going to set it, set it as a color. Then I'm going to add two color animations to this. I'm going to use the green as its off state and I'll switch the color when it's, when it's on. So when handle off is tapped, remember this is handle off, even though you're turning it on, this is the, the name of the actual layer you're going to be hitting since it's on top, handle off. When that's tapped, we'll say I want it to turn blue. And then when handle on, the handle that's in the on position is tapped, we'll turn this back to green. So now when I tap it, it switches, turns on and off. I can make it move the same way. If I add two move animations, we'll say that when handle off is tapped, let's make it move over to 10. Make it spring just because that's fun. And then when handle on is tapped, Let's see, we want to handle off. Let's move it over to uh, 310. Then when handle on is tapped, we'll move it back over to 10. We'll use this spring animation. So when I hit it, whoop, 
it bounces over. Just to make this clear, I'll say the right side. So it'll be even. Just like that. So you can do this for pretty much anything, anything you want to. It's, it's really simple. And what's nice about having this button, the reason we put it in, in this container to begin with, is that we can now move it wherever we want to on the canvas and it'll still function without ruining any of our, our sizing or scaling or, or, or the placements for the, the handle sliders. It's all gonna be good. The only thing to keep in mind is that you can't just grab the button itself because you see how you just grab the handle. Since this is in a transparent layer, you can't grab it. So the way that you move it is by just moving its coordinates. So it's in 134, I say I want it to be at 200 in, and then well, 400 pixels down. Wherever I put it, it still will work the way that I want it to. So that's it. Thanks for watching.